all about. Now, to turn from one bit of non-league football to another bit of non-league football that we started with, I'm absolutely delighted to say that we now have Southport manager Gary Bravin on the line. Good evening, Gary. Hello. How are we doing? Not too bad, mate. You OK, mate? I'm, I'm very good, thank you. But we were more concerned about your well-being, given that heartbreaking end on, on Saturday. Has it started to, to sun, sink in a little bit, get over the disappointment? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're disappointed with the uh, conceding the penalty in the 93rd minute, but you know we sort of went there with with um, with our own plan, and, and I think we carried that out well. And you know our supporters were fantastic. Derby County supporters were fantastic. Everyone connected with Derby was was different class, and you know it was a really positive um, performance. And okay, we had, we had the dis disappointment of the conceding that goal, but. You know, I think we left with our heads held. I am, you know, we're proud of everyone connected with the club. Um, Gary, it's uh, Stephen Desmond here. Um, Hi, Stephen. You know what I mean? Hi there. How are you doing? It's, yeah, uh, not too it, bad, mate. Excellent. It's, it's a real cliche at times like that, you know, when you, when you kind of it, you have that sucker punch at, at the end of a game um, and everyone says you must be gutted in the dressing room but also be happy to have played so well against a higher, higher uh, kind of league, league opposition. Um, is, is that rubbish? <laughs> Do you actually just feel gutted, um, or is there just, or is there an overriding sense of pride at the same time? No, I think you know. I said it publicly before the game started that um, you know we went there, and I just wanted the lads to give a good account of themselves and show what they were capable of, and, and I think they certainly done that. Um, it was a real spirited performance. We played some good football. We defended fantastically, and you know we created chances, and you know obviously I'm gutted with the result, but. You know, we achieved what, what we set out to do and, you know, like I said, I left there proud of the lads. Looking now to January, Gary, is there a bit more money to spend from that cut run or has, has very little changed? Obviously, budget is not exactly huge. Uh, well, well, we've, you know, when I've took over the club, we, we were over budget when I took over. Um, so I've not changed much in terms of um, what, what we inherited. But, you know, we, we've, as soon as I come through the door, the lads showed me more than what, what I expected anyway. They've got a good, good group of lads and, you know, they've um, done what we've, what we've expected. They've, you know, they've, they've given everything and you know, gone on a real good run, great cup run, and got us out of that bottom four of the, of, of the league and, you know, showed some real good performances. So, you know, now while that's happened, you know we've we've sort of um, we've we have trimmed the squad down a little bit with one or two moving on, and you know we're in a healthy position now where where we can sort of take our time and look to improve the squad, but at the same time we don't want to rip up what we've already got because we believe we've got a good squad of players here. And Gary, you've done incredibly well uh, in in the time time you've been there, and and obviously the the FA Cup game is going to put spotlight on your team and a number of players within it. Does that make it harder to try and keep hold of that group of players in, in this time, in, in January? Um, well, yeah, but I, 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 to, to me, that's part of my enjoyment. You know, I want to see players progress and, and go on and do well. And, you know, it's out with, out with the old and in with the new. And, you know, we can, if we can get, like, the best out of the, the players we've got here and they go on to better things, then that's, that's a success in itself, you know. So that's the way we look at things. And you've only got to look at our goalkeeping situation. You know, he, straight away, you know, he's, his stock's hired uh, during his time with us and he's done really well and there's a lot of interest from him and it looks like we're going to lose him. But, you know, that's we, we don't look at it as a negative. We look at it as a positive you know, we um, if this is a platform for people to come and produce, you know, the type of football that they're, you know, they're capable of, and but that, that that's what we want to continue to do as well as picking up results. And Gary, obviously this season the the prime ambition is to stay up. Do you believe that Southport in the long term are capable of doing more than that in the conference? Um, yeah, I believe there's a lot of potential here. This is a club that I'm really familiar with. Um, you know, obviously, we're still part-time. You know, we've sort of um, yo-yoed between the conference and, and, and the conference north. But you know, there's a real, there's a real potential here, which you know, uh, you know, it excites me. And you know, we, we, we're fortunate to have a good chairman, and you know, Charlie Clapham, who 
you know, he gets a, he gets a little bit of stick at times, but you know, he's got the club at heart. He really has genuine club at heart, and you know, we'll never put this club in a position where, you know, you see some of the clubs now, and it's sad where they're going. You know, the the, the, the problems they're having financially. You know, they're going into liquidation or. You know, that, that'll certainly never be the case with, with a club like Southport. While Charlie's in charge, you know, he's very shrewd and he's a good businessman, but he loves the club and, you know, he wants the club to do well and, you know, and and equally, you know, I'm, I'm full of ambition. So, you know, we have our little battles to try and move forward, but, you know, we'll never, you know, we'll never put the, the club in that position. Commiserations about Saturday and thank you ever so much for coming on to speak to us, Gary, and best of luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much, mate. Take Hello, Gary. Bye. Cheers, Steve. Thanks. Bye, bye now. And so, and so now we can move from one section of the conference to the other, because where we talk about relegation and struggling to stay up, there is, of course, a promised land of the Football League at the other end, and there is six, seven points, pardon me, between the fifth and fifteenth place team in the conference. How exciting must that it's, be? It's incredible. It seems to be kind of concertinaing up and getting ever tighter as well um, as, as we come to this crucial part of the season. Um, and you've got a real mixed bag of contenders in there for, get, for getting into those end playoff spots. Um, if you look at the, the kind of big spenders like um, Eastley, uh, Forest Green Rovers, uh, who, with that money comes a bit of pressure. Exactly, and, and it's almost like not a surprise that they're in there competing, um, but they are doing so alongside some more surprise packages like Woking, mm. who I think have done incredibly well so far this season. Um, Dover have gone on this amazing run of... Ten unbeaten, ten, and then, ten of course, the cup now. against Palace. Yeah, there exa some exactly. Money there to, exactly. To chuck in. And, um, and they seem to have... Um, yeah, they, they've taken to, to the league amazingly well. Um, and who's to say they're, they're not in the mix as well? And then just to chuck in, as if that isn't enough, you've got Gateshead and Halifax. So Gateshead have, have been to a playoff final and lost last year. Halifax have got playoff experience last a year as well. Exactly. Again, not, so, not overly surprised that they're up there competing and contending, um, and they've got that valuable experience of, of being close to it previously. Yeah. We're going to head to a break now, and we'll be back shortly. My name is Nick the Moose Batsford, Commander-in-Chief, tiptv.co.uk. We're here 10am every day covering markets and sport, live from the heart of London, St Paul's. Purpose, making money from thought-provoking ideas. Strong conviction tips for short-term trading. As always, do not gamble with what you cannot afford to lose. You're watching Tip T. Are you a special one? Have you got what it takes? It takes a lot to impress me. You get creative and upload your best football skills, trick shots and goals. Use the hashtag special ones so I can decide if you are good enough to win a coaching session with me in London. Go to specialones.tumble.com for all the details. My name is Nick the Moose Batsford, Commander-in-Chief, tiptv.co.uk. We're here 10am every day covering markets and sport, live from the heart of London, St Paul's. Purpose, making money through thought-provoking ideas. Strong conviction tips for short-term trading. As always, do not gamble with what you cannot afford to lose.